Right. So, to continue our discussion on the introduction to travel demand forecasting, we're going to discuss the modal split and the traffic assignment. So, the first two trip generation and trip distributions have been discussed last week. So, we're continue, we'll continue our discussion for the other two for the classic four-step forecasting modeling. So, let's start with modal split. So, what is a modal split? Modal split determines which mode of the transportation will be used to make the trip. So, from our previous discussions before this introduction to travel demand forecasting, I've discussed to you or introduced to you what we call the logit model. So, logit model wherein the presentation of the probability for the modal split is equal to E raised to utility function of the trip or the mode of the trip over the summation of the uh, those e raised to the utility function of the mode of the trip. Okay, so that utility function is expressed you now in terms of their variable or factors. Okay, so those factors are determined, for example, the cost, the time, and other factors such as the uh, constant values. Okay, so depending upon the what we call regression analysis of those data collected from trip distribution and trip generation. Okay, so for us to understand or at least apply this modal split, let's answer problems regarding modal split. Okay, so a simple work mode choice model estimated from data in a small urban area to determine the probabilities of individual travelers selecting various modes. The mode choices include automobile drive alone or DL, automobile share drive SR, and bus, which is noted as B. And the utility functions are estimated as follows. So for drive alone, that is 2.2 .2 minus 0 0.2 multiplied by the cost minus 0 0.03 multiplied by travel time. Utility function for share drive is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.2 multiplied by the cost. Minus 0 0.03 multiplied by travel time and the bus is negative 0 0.2 multiplied by the cost minus 0 0.01 multiplied by the travel time. So, in this problem, uh, cost is in dollars and time is in minutes. Between a residential area and an industrial complex, 4,000 workers, which is generating vehicle based trips or from our trip generation, depart for work during the peak hour. For all workers, the cost of driving an automobile is $6 with a travel time of 20 minutes and the bus fare is $1 with a travel time of 25 minutes. If the shared ride option always consists of two travelers sharing costs equally, how many workers will take each mode? Okay? So, from this problem, now what we're asked is the number of trips from different modes. So, for us to solve this, let's get this utility function equations and then use this as our basis to compute for the utility functions. Okay, so let's start with the U, DL, or for drive alone. Okay, so that is 2.2 minus 0 0.2 multiplied by the cost, let's say C minus 0 0.03 multiplied by the travel time. Let's call it T. Okay. So, so for drive alone, the cost is $6 and the time is 20 minutes. Okay. For shared ride, that is $3 because stated there that it will be shared or equally distributed, but for the time, it will be the same as the drive alone. In bus, that will be $1 for the cost and it is 25 minutes travel time. Okay, so for the drive alone, that is 2.2 minus 0 0.2 multiplied by 6 minus 0 0.03 multiplied by 20. Okay, so computing that equation or simplifying that equation, we will have 0 0.4 as the value for that utility function. For shared ride, that is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.2 multiplied by the cost minus 0 0.03 multiplied by the time to go to 0 
minus 0.2 multiplied by 3 dollars minus 0.03 multiplied by 20. So from here, we will have the answer as negative 0.4 as the value for that utility function. Okay? And last for our bus, that is negative 0.2 multiplied by the cost minus 0 0 0.01 multiplied by the time or is equal to negative 0.2 multiplied by 1, 1 dollar minus 0 0.01 multiplied by the travel time, 25 or equal to negative 0 0.45. So, th these are the values for our utility functions. From there, we're going to use the logit model. Okay, so to easily compute for the logit model, I think we should compute first for the value of e raised to utility function of each mode. So, for the drive alone, that is e raised to 0.4 or is equal to that is 1.492 okay 1.492 okay, for shared drive no, e raised to negative 0 0.4 that is equal to 0 0.670 or 670 0 0.670 and for the bus that is e raised to negative 0 0.45 or equal, equal to 0 0.638. Okay. Those are the values of uh, for each mode in terms of their exponential uh, values. No? So using e raised to uh, utility function. Okay. So using the logit model, so we could actually compute for the probability or percentage of their of the rights in terms of the total number of rights. So that is logit model is is this equation P is equal to E raised to U over summation of E raised to U. Okay. For for shared drive for drive alone that is equal to 1.492 over the total of these three which is equal to 2.8. Okay? So, 2.8 or 800, that is equal to 0 0.533. Okay? 0 0.533. So, therefore, for the other rides or mode, mode that is 0 0.670 over 2.800, and then for the bus, is equal to 0 0.638 over 2.800. So, for the shared ride, that is 0 0.239 and for the bus, that is 0 0.228. So, that's the uh, percentage no? or probability for each mode. Okay, from there, since in our problem, it was stated that the total number of rides during the peak hour is 4,000. So, we will multiply this probability of percentages by 4,000. Okay. So, 4,000. So, from there, we could actually have the values of the number of trips per mode. And that's what I've been asked or in the, in the problem. So, for the driver loan, that will be 0 0.533 multiplied by 4,000 or will give us 2,132. Then, for the shared ride, that is 0 0.239 multiplied by 4,000, it will give us 956. And for the bus, this will be 912. So, these are the answers for our problem.
Okay. That is for our first problem regarding modal split. Okay? So now, moving with the next problem, a bus company is making costly efforts in an attempt to increase work trip bus usage for the travel conditions described in the previous problem. An exclusive bus lane is constructed that reduces bus travel time to 10 minutes. So this means that the same situation applies from the previous problem, same utility functions will be used, but this time, a bus lane or exclusive bus lane will be, will be constructed. So A, determine the mode of distribution of trips after the lane is constructed. B, if shared ride vehicles are also permitted to use facility and travel time for bus and shared ride modes is 10 minutes, determine the modal distribution. And C, given the conditions described in part B, you know, which is for the shared ride and the bus, uh, using the bus lane and they have their travel time as 10 minutes, determine the modal distribution if the bus company offers this time free bus service. Okay, so we're still using the same utility function, specifically on the bus, which is negative 0 0.2 multiplied by the cost, minus 0 0.01 multiplied by the travel time. Okay, so this will be our next problem. So we could uh, see here that in this problem, same situation that we're going to use from the previous one, but this time, the problem is that there will be an exclusive bus lane. Okay, that is the first, that, is the, that will be the scenario for this problem. So from that problem, actually, Okay. from that problem, we could actually use the same utility function values for, or for answering question or let's say letter A from this problem. Okay, so for our solution, so for letter A, so we're going to use the same utility functions as what we have been used from the previous problem. So for the driver loan, we're still using UDL as 0 0.4 for the shared ride as negative 0 0.4. But this time, since uh, there will be an exclusive bus lane for the bus, so the, va the value of that utility function, of course, will be different from the other scenario. So what, what again is our utility function value for the bus that is negative from the Equation, so that is negative 0 0.2 multiplied by the cost minus, minus 0 0.01 multiplied by travel time. So negative 0 0.2 minus multiplied by the cost minus 0 0.01 multiplied by the travel time. This time, our cost still $1, but our travel time is reduced to 10 minutes. So by substituting that in this equation, uh, is it negative 0 0.2 multiplied by $1 minus 0 0.01 multiplied by a travel time 10 minutes, it will give us the value of negative 0 0.3 as the value of the utility function for the bus. So, applying this, okay, to compute again for the utility values, or should I say, using the logic model, let's compute for the value of the E for the bus, since it will be different from the other one, E raised to negative 0 0.3, it will give us the value it will give us the value of 0 0.819 Okay, that is for E raised to negative 0 0.81. So, we're still using the same values of E for the, for the drive alone and the same value of E for the shared right from our previous problem. So, going back to our previous problem, okay, so we could still use this one, 1.492 for drive alone and 0 0.670 for shared right. So, let's... Put it here, 1.492 and 0 0.6704 for shared drive. But this time, so we will have different values of portion or probability of the uh, number of modes from the modes 
using our logit model. So, that will is for P for drive alone is equal to, what? That is 1.492 over the sum of this uh, E value. So, 1.492 plus 0 0.670 plus 0 0.819. Okay, that is equal to 2.9. 81. Okay, that is 2.981. So, over 2.981 and then for the shared drive, that is 0 0.670 over 2.981 and for the bus, that is 0 0.819 over 2.981. So, from here, we will have different values of our probability or our percentages. So, for the driver loan, it will give us approximate the value of 0 0.5. And then for shared ride, it will give us the value of 0 0.225. And then for the bus, that will give us 0 0.275. Okay. So, for the exact values, okay, of this uh, equation, so, we could actually applying the total, or should I say, uh, if we're going to not estimate into three decimal points, it will give us another set of values. Anyways, okay, whatever it is, we're going to observe the increased number of the rides with respect to the, uh, to the construction of the bus thing. Okay? So, so apply, multiplying this by 4,000, so, multiplied by 4,000 because that will be the total number of trips. This one by 4,000 as well. Okay, and this one by 4,000. So, from here, it will give us different values of our function. So, I think we could actually compute that here. We could have 2,000 trips. Okay, this time, for the shared ride, it will be different. So, it will give us 900 trips. Okay, and this one as 1,100 trips. So, this will be the answers for letter A. Okay. So, if we're going to use approximate or let's say exact value or close to the exact value. So, here I, I think it will be different from 0 0.5. So, it will be an increase. There will be also an increase in 0 0.225 and 0 0.275. Nevertheless, what we're going to see is that there's an increase in the right of the uh, commuters or workers no, from the previous situation because if we're going to look at again with the uh, our answers that is 2136 for the drive alone, 956 for shared ride, and 912 for the bus. So let's put it here 2136, 956, and 912. So from here, we could actually see that there's a decrease in the bus in the drive alone. Okay, there's also a decrease in the shared ride, but at but an increase in the bus. Okay, so this is the effect of the costly effort of the bus company. Okay, so costly in cost, there will be cost in the construction of the bus lane, but eventually on the long run, they could actually uh, get back what they have invested because of the number of workers that will use. The bus lane, therefore, even if the cost is only one dollar, okay, so there will be an increase in their revenue. Okay, so that is for our letter A. Now, for letter B, the question is if shared ride vehicles are also permitted to use the facility and travel time for bus and shared ride modes 10 minutes determine the modal distribution. So, this time, okay, we're going to use 10 minutes travel time for the shared ride. Okay? So, let's go back. Let's go back with our utility functions equation. Okay? okay? So, let's get it here. Okay? So, that we can easily compute this one. So, it was stated that the travel time for Shared ride will be reduced also to 10 minutes, but the cost 
is still three dollars. The travel time is ten minutes. For the drive alone, still the same, six dollars, and the travel time is twenty minutes. In the bus, since they're using both using bus lane, so they will have ten minutes travel time, and still the fare and the cost is one dollar. Okay, so I think we could have the utility function for drive alone, which is still zero point four. But this time we will have this different value for the shared ride. So applying the equation zero point eight minus zero point two multiplied by the cost minus zero point zero three multiplied by the travel time. So it will give us the value of negative zero point ten. Okay, as our utility function. And then for the bus, so it will have it will be the same negative zero point three. From our previous condition in letter A, so from here we could actually compute for the total. Okay, let's not in this time let's compute for the total value or let's say total of E. No, the summation of E raised to U. That is from our logic model, right? So E raised to U multiplied by the summation over E raised summation of E raised to U. So to easily compute, that is summation of E raised to U or E raised to zero point four plus e raised to negative 0.10 plus e raised to negative 0.3. So, you could actually compute it this way, okay, from uh, from our previous problem, okay, or the other way around. So, just compute it in such a way that uh, at least in three decimal places or as instructed to you by your instructor or by the problem itself, okay? If the problem asks you to, uh, to compute it in such a way that you will not reduce your computation or calculation in between in four decimal places, so you're going to use that. If not, if you have the prerogative in using the three decimal places or at or for safe uh, computation and calculation, do not reduce your answers into three decimal places unless otherwise instructed or given in the instructions to the problem. So in this case, let's, use, let's compute it this way. So the summation of E for different modes 0. e raised to 0. 0.4 plus e raised to negative 0. 0.10 plus e raised to negative 0. 0.3 will give us the value of, let's say this time, I will use it in three decimal places, that is 3.137. Okay, that is 3.137. Okay, from here, I could compute for the values of the P for different modes, for drive alone, for the shared ride, and for the bus, okay? So for the drive alone, that is e raised to 0 0.4, okay, from the logic model, over 3.137. For the shared drive, that is e raised to negative 0 0.10, over 3.137. And for the bus, that is e raised to negative 0 0.3, over 3.137. So we could actually compute it in such a way that we're not, using the three decimal places for the values of E, but for their total only, okay? So, it is a case-to-case -case basis depending upon your instructor or the, or the instructed or the instructions given on the problem. So, simplifying these equations or this uh, solution, so for the drive alone, we will have 0 0.476. For the shared drive, that will be 0 0.2. 288 and then for the bus that is 0 0.236 okay so multiplying that by 4000 since we're still dealing with the same scenario as for the first problem okay so now we're going to know the number of trips given that the shared ride and the bus are using bus lane and then the travel time reduced by 10 minutes so this one okay so answering this 0 0.476 multiplied by 4000 that is 1904 so 0 0.2288 multiplied by 4000 that is 1152 and then 0 0.236 multiplied by 4000 that is 944 trips okay, this is the answer for the second situation now let's compare it with the previous one, okay, the the one that uh, we're in, the shared ride still not using the exclusive bus lane. So, 
What are the values that has been computed? 2,000, 9,000, and 1,100. That is 2,000 here. Then, Nine hundred and one thousand one hundred. So this is with bus lane, but the shared ride and the bus uses the bus lane, and the other one is with bus lane, but it is exclusive on the bus only. So you could see here that there's there's a con there's an increase or should I say decrease in the bus lane, okay, in the bus lane, of course, there will be a dec This time, there's an increase in the shared ride since you know, the shared ride option can use the bus lane, but there's a decrease in the number of bus using the, bu uh, using the bus lane. So, maybe, just so maybe, the re one of the reasons why there's an increase in the uh, shared ride because one for the convenience, since you're 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 just two two of you, okay, using the the ride. Let's say you're using a, a TNVS, okay. So neglecting the driver because you're just the two of you. You have the convenience, also the safety, okay. So that's why people opted to or let's say, let's assume that the people will opt to use shared ride in comparison to bus, wherein there will be. More commuters or passengers, or in this case workers, that will be using the bus, and the safety somehow is lesser than the safety in the shared ride option. Okay, so and, uh, even if the cost is greater than the uh, shared ride in comparison to bus, but what they're paying is the convenience and their safety. So well, that's one of the possible reasons, and a lot more reasons. Maybe they could afford it you now for the economical status. Okay, so they could afford it. And also, since even if they have the same travel time, okay, as 10 minutes, but in bus lane, okay, or in riding the bus, some of which are will have their bus point or bus intervention. So this 10 minutes could increase or depending upon on the situation, could also decrease as well. But in shared ride, 10 minutes will be approximately the the highest time, okay, and it could also decrease, okay, depending upon the speed or the velocity. So, there are a lot of factors that could be considered in relation to this problem, specifically on this situation, because we'll actually see that there's an increase in the using the bus lane, but there's a decrease in the using the, uh, sorry, the increase in using the shared ride in the bus lane, but there's a decrease in using the bus in the bus lane, unlike the other situation where it it is exclusive only to bus. Okay? So that's for answer. That's our answers for the uh, situation B. And last is that given the conditions uh, described in part B, wherein the shared ride and the bus are using the bus lane, determine the mode of distribution. If the bus company this time offers free bus service. Okay? So if the company offers free bus service, what will happen with the modal distribution okay so let's uh get back these equations okay and then let's analyze it in such a way that it will be what the bus the bus will offer free bus ride so in in drive alone still the same six dollars for the cost and the time is still 20 minutes okay since Shared ride is using the bus lane, so still three dollars, but ten minutes, okay, as per stated in the problem. And this time for the bus, it will be free, so zero for the cost, and then still ten minutes. So we could actually compute again for the utility functions for each uh, mode. So for the UDL, I think it will be the same, zero point four, okay. For the shared ride, it will be negative 0 0.10. But this time, for the bus, it will be different. So, since the cost will be 0 because it is free, so it will be just negative 0 0.01 multiplied by 10 minutes or it is negative 0 0.1. Okay? 
So, So that's the answer, okay, for the utility function of the bus. So let's compute again for the total, okay, total of the utility functions. So that is, or let's say exponential of the utility function, that is e raised to 0 0.4 plus e raised to negative 0 0.10 plus e raised to negative 0 0.10. So it will give us no, the value of 3.301, okay? That is 3.301. So, using the logic model, so we could actually compute for each mode, okay, for the probability or percentage or partition, okay? So, for the drive alone, that is e raised to 0 0.4 over 3.301. For the shared drive, is e raised to negative 0 0.10 over 3.301 and for the bus that is e raised to negative point, 0 0.10 the same uh, and then 3.301 so we will have our probability or percentages in terms of uh, uh, on different modes so in the drive alone that will be 0 0.402 okay? 0 0.402 for the shared right, and that is also the same as for the bus, that will be equal to 0 0.274. Okay, 0 0.274. Okay. okay. So, let's compute it, or by, multiply it by our number of trips, which is 4,000. Okay. For each mode. So that we can actually see what will happen if the bus company will offer free bus ride. Okay? So, 0 0.402 multiplied by 4,000, that is 1,608 trips. 1,608 trips. And then, 0 0.274 multiplied by 4,000 is 1,096 trips for the shared ride and also the same with the bus ride. So, so this is, this is our, these are answers in terms of different mode and in trips, okay? So, now let's go back to what we have computed from the previous situation. So, from our previous situation, we compute the number of trips in such a way that the uh, bus and the shared ride using the bus lane, but the bus still uh, collecting $1 for the cost for their travel. So, let's compare it in our computation here that is for the shared ride, that is 1,904. Okay. For the, I'm uh, sorry, for the drive alone, for the shared ride is 1,152. And for the bus is 944. So, this is with bus lane. But, the, the bus is offering free ride. Okay. So, we're still using here. Okay. The shared ride and the bus still using the bus lane. But this, in this case, with bus lane, no, but the bus is not offering free ride here. Okay? So shared ride is also using. So cost is $1. So as you could see here, or in comparison, there's a decrease again in using the, the drive alone. Okay? Because uh, practical speaking, you know, the people or, or workers using drive alone will opt to use bus lane, either shared ride or the free ride. But if you notice, there's a decrease also in the people or workers using the shared ride because the bus company offer free ride. So if, if we're going to uh, compare it with our scenario here in our country, in the Philippines, so uh, if you notice in our EDSA carousel bus lane, from the time that uh, they offer free bus ride or what we call libreng sakai, so people opted to use the bus rather than commuting or should I say using their own vehicle or commuting in such a way using uh, TNVS just such as Grab, 
uh, Uber or other TNBS apps. Okay, such as Ancash, Joyride, and the rest. Okay, so we could see here because they've noticed that the bus in the bus lane are just con in a continuous travel. Okay, so uh, that bus lane is specifically exclusive only on the bus. So, so we could actually see here that there's an really an increase pro for from the uh, previous one that we have or with the fair. Okay, right now. No, in our time, year January 2023, uh, the Libang Saka is not free as of the moment or the 24-7 Edsa Bus Carousel uh, service because uh, the government still working out with their budget. Okay, That's the reason why the government is trying out to extend okay, the Libang Sakai or the free bus ride because eventually, if you uh, still remember our discussion on the effects of the transportation on our society, one of the effects is that it will affect greatly on the economical status of a certain country or city or municipality. Okay, So that's the reason because we know that the, if there's a movement of people or the movement of goods and services and even people are in a better situation, so the progress in the economy will also be better. Okay, So that's the answer or should I say observation that we could address here or could actually conclude somehow in this problem. Okay? So now let's move to other problem still involving with the modals. Okay? So consider a residential area and two shopping centers that are possible destinations. From 7 to 8 p.m. on a Friday night, 900 vehicle-based shopping trips leave the residential area for the two shopping centers. A joint shopping trip mode destination choice logic model, so either auto or bus, is estimated giving the following coefficients. So these are the coefficients that will be used in the logic model. So for the variable auto constant, that is the uh, for coefficient or auto, that is 0 0.6 for bus 0. Travel time is for auto negative 0 0.3 for the bus negative 0 0.3 as well. And the commercial floor space in thousands of feet squared or if you still remember in our trip generation, we are still using that okay, variable. For auto coefficient, that is 0 0.012. And for the bus coefficient, that is 0 0.012 as well. Okay? So, these are the travel times for each shopping cent shopping centers. 1 and 2 are as follows. Okay? Travel time to shopping center 1 in minutes by auto 8 minutes. And by bus 14. In shopping center 2 by auto 15 minutes and by bus 22. I mean, it's a question for us to answer is, if the shopping center, if shopping center 2 has 4, 400,000 square foot of commercial floor space and shopping center 1 has 250,000 square foot, that I mean that the, the distribution of Friday night shopping trips by destination and mode. Okay? So, we are given the uh, coefficients and these values. Okay? So, first, what we're going to do is to derive the utility functions for each mode. Okay, so here, okay, so we can actually see the constant, okay, and the coefficients or the variables and the coefficient. So for the auto, let's say that this is u sub a, that is, and let's go back here, that is 0 0.6, okay, auto constant plus. Is it plus? Okay, plus negative 0 0.3, right? Multiplied by time, okay, because of the time. And then plus, that is 0 0.012 multiplied by the commercial floor space area, okay? 0 0.012 multiplied by the area. So, to reduce it in such a way that 0 0.6 minus 0 0.3, multiplied by the time plus 0 0.012 multiplied by the area. So therefore in the for the bus okay for the bus that is equal to so auto constant is zero so the same thing as the so the travel time is the same with the bus uh, the auto and then the commercial space co uh, coefficient so that is negative 0 0.3 multiplied by time plus 0 0.012 multiplied by the 
area. So, these are our utility functions equation. Okay, these two. Uh, so, from them, from there, we could actually compute now for the distribution of the rides. Okay? So, let's go back to the problem. So, state here that 900 shopping, or should I say, vehicle-based shopping trips. So, so, most probably it came from our trip generation calculation. It is not uh, presented here, but let's ass we can assume it that way because we, we could not actually get the number of vehicle-based trips without applying the concept of trip generation or maybe in application also to trip distribution. Right? So, so that is the value or the the number of vehicle-based trips in relation to that. Okay? So, now, let's apply it on our problem. Okay? These utility functions. Okay? So, let's uh, use first the for the auto. Or let's say private vehicle. Let's assume it this way. So, auto or TNVS. Okay? So, our solution, or let's try it here. U sub A is 0 0.6 minus 0 0.3 0 0.3 travel time plus 0 0.012 for the area. Okay? So, 0 0.6 minus 0 0.3. So, what will be the travel time here? Okay? So, we have in our table, let's say, uh, let's compute first for the shopping center 1. Okay? Shopping center 1. This one. Okay? Shopping center 1. Okay, so by auto, that's 8 minutes, and by bus, 14 minutes. So, uh, let's call it in this way, shopping center 1. Okay, so that is, in this case, is 8 minutes plus 0 0.012 multiplied by the area. It states here that this area is in terms of thousands of square feet. So, on the problem... So, for shopping center 1 is 250,000 square feet. So, it will be, it's because it's in 1,000 square feet, so what we're going to multiply here is 250 only. No? So, from that, so 0 0.6 minus 0 0.3 multiply by, by 8 multiplied by 0 0.012. Sorry, plus 0 0.012 plus multiplied by 250. That is, what? 1.20. Okay? 1.20. That is for our utility, utility function A in, let's say, shopping center 1. Okay? So, how about in, for the bus, for the shopping center, for the bus in shopping center 1, what is the utility function? 0 0.3 multiplied by time plus 0 0.012 multiplied by A. Okay, so that is equal to so negative 0 0.3 multiplied by time. So looking back with our table, that is that is 14 minutes by bus. Okay, 14 minutes, and then for the area, so that's in terms of a uh, thousand feet squared. So in the problem, it was stated that okay. 250 again, so for shopping center 1. So, 250. So, simplifying this one, okay, that is 0 point, negative 0 0.3 multiplied by 14 plus 0 0.012 multiplied by 250. That is negative 1.2. Okay? So, that is for utility function for the bus in shopping center 1. So, how about shopping center 2? So, let's compute it also. For the shopping center 2. So again, let's present our... Oh, okay, so we could actually uh, compute it or substitute it uh, directly. So for the auto, that is 0 0.6 minus 0 0.3. So this time, the time is different. So here, travel time for shopping center 2. So 
15 for the auto and 22 for the bus. Okay, so multiplied by 15 plus 0 0.012 multiplied by, again, looking at the area stated in our problem, that's 400,000 square feet, 400,000 square feet. So multiplied by 400 only, uh, 400. Okay, so for our utility function value for the auto in shopping center 2, that will give us the value of 0 0.9. Okay. For the bus, okay, that is 0, oh, sorry, negative 0 0.3, okay, multiplied by 22 for the time, plus 0 0.012, the same as 400 of square foot or 400, it will give us the value of negative 1.8 for the telefunction of the bus in shopping center. Okay, so now, we have our values Okay, for the utility function. So, what's next? What we're going to do? So, we're going to So, we're going to compute no, for the for the total of E. No, or it's the summation of A in terms of both the shopping center 1 and the shopping center 2. So why is it that we're going to combine both the shopping center 1 and the shopping center 2? Okay, why is it that way? Because since they are, the travel or the vehicle-based trips are not stated if, if the shopping center 1 is in terms of economical status or their their purposes, okay, since it's a shopping center, so basically, or in general, we will assume that all the people we're going to use is in terms of shopping, right? So, that's why we're going to sum up, no? we're going to use all these values to compute for the summation of E raised to U using our logic model. No? So, from that, we could actually compute, okay, for the, for the values of our probability or what we call our distribution. Okay, because we could we could use that, okay? So so that we could actually what know what are the possible trips for each uh mode in terms of their location, either shopping center one and our shopping center. Okay? So from here, okay, so we could actually compute for the summation of E raised to U. Okay, so let's compute it here. So that is E raised to 1.2 for the shopping center 1 first plus E raised to negative 1.2 plus E raised to 0 0.9 plus E raised to negative 1.8. So we will have our answers, our answer as 6.246. So these are the these are just the value for the summation of e raised to u. So we're go we could uh, use it now with our logit model. So our logit model, okay. So I will write this formula here: is e raised to u over summation of e raised to u. So this is for the general equation. So now let's find out for the auto for shopping center one. Okay, so that is e raised to one point two over 6.246, okay, 6.246, okay, so e raised to 1.2 over 6.246, that is equal to 0 0.532, 0 0.532, okay, for the bus in the shopping center 1, that is e raised to negative 1.2, over 6.246 or that will give us the value of 0 0.048 okay so how about the in shopping center 2 for the auto that is e raised to 0 0.9 over 6.246 okay and for the bus that is in shopping center e raised to negative 1.8 over 6.2 
for C. Okay, so you can get it okay, by computing these values. Okay. So for the auto that is 0 0.394 and for the bus that is 0 0.026 0 0.026 so actually, we could multiply this by 900 because that is the vehicle base trips, okay? So computed for shopping center 1 and shopping center 2. So computing it, so 0 0.532 multiplied by 900, that is equal to 479, okay? So 0. 0 0.048 multiplied by 900 that is equal to 0 that is 43 trips so 0 0.394 multiplied by 900 that's equal to 355 trips and then 0 0.026 multiplied by 900 is equal to 23 trips. So, these are the number of trips, okay, per mode in, in res, with respect to, their, to the location or for shopping center 1 and shopping center. Okay. So, you can see here that for the bus, okay, so, uh, since uh, their, the travel time is greater than the auto, so, there's a great difference between uh, the use or the number of trips in auto for both shopping centers one and two. Okay, so that's the answer for our problem. Okay, on this uh, uh in terms of the trips. Okay? So now let's move with the traffic assignment or route selection. Okay? So traffic assignment or route selection implies for that for some modes there are maybe or there may be more than one route that can be used to travel between two locations. In some cases, however, route selection is limited. Okay, uh, there's a limitation on the routes. Okay, so for us to understand this easily, no? so let's answer this problem. It states here that the travel time by railroad in five in hours between sixteen city pairs A to B is depicted in the following diagram. Okay, so later on I will show you the diagram. And then the, the number of daily trips between city A and all other cities in thousands is as follows. So this is the diagram that has been stated in the problem. So you actually see here that from point A to point B is two hours. Okay, now you see that. Okay. Then from point B to point C six hours. So so in in this case, so the distribution or the the route is in this manner. So A to E, E to I. I to M, M to N, N to O, and O to P. Something like that, no? So, this one. Okay. Okay, then C to G, G to K, K to O. Okay, that's the uh, travel, okay, or location of the travel, okay, from A to P, okay, so these are in hours, and then we have given the number of cities in thousand, okay, so what, what will be, uh, the problem, okay, given that, so one of the problems I'm going to answer is that the shortest time path from city A to all other cities, so first let's answer this one, the shortest time path 
from city A to all other cities. Okay? So, let's answer this by using the diagram. Okay? So, so, let's say, let's assume first city A to city B because it has been answered the shortest time from city A to other cities. Okay? So, from city A to city B, what is the shortest path? So, is it A going to E going to F and then uh, going to another city or is just A to B? So, there's no other path. No? So, there's just A to B. So, 2. So, A to B. Oh, let's... Uh, A to B is 2, wherein the path is A, B. Right? A, B. Oh. Other one. A to C. How about that? A to C. So, A to C, I think we could actually see here that it is just A to B, then B to C. Right? So, so A, A, A to C is how many? So, that is 2 plus 6, 8 hours. And then, that is A to B to C. Right? So, and it, and it goes on. So, let's say, let's say, let's move to another route. Or let's say A to G. Okay? For example, A to G. So, I will answer to this one. And then A to G. What will be the possible shortest path from A to G? So, so we could actually have this one. So, I will, uh, draw it here. So, A to E. E to F and F to G, right? This is the first one. Oh, the other one is we could actually have A to B, then B to C, then C to G, right? But we could actually have another path that is what? A to E, I sorry. A to B, rather. Then, B to F, right? Then, F to G. So, there's a three possible ways of getting from point A to G. Okay, so let's uh, write it down here. So, first, let's uh, present it the, on the red on the first option that we have, or the red. A to G. Okay, so let's count the number of R's. So, 4, A to E, 4. Plus E to F4, so that will be 8. Plus F to G6, that will be 14. So write it down here, 14. Okay. So how about the blue one? Okay. The blue path. Okay. That is from A to B, 2. Then B to C, 6. So that will be 8. And then C to G, plus 4, 12. Okay. So A to G, the other one is 12. Okay. So last, the green path that we've drawn here. So, A to B is 2. B to A, F is 8. So, that will be 10. And F to G is 6. That will be 14. Okay? So, A to G for the green path is 14. So, therefore, from these three, we could actually see that this one is the shortest path no? for the uh, for traveling from point A to point G. What are those Points are paths that we've, uh, we've used. So that is A to B, B to C, then C to G. Okay, let's write it down. A to B, B to C, and then C to G. Okay, that's the answer. So we could, you could actually continue this on your own no, as a self, uh, activity. Okay, by finding another path to, uh, from point A to another city. Okay. So, that is uh, the way we're going to answer this question, letter A. Okay. So, after answering that, so uh, we are starting to form a sh uh, straight line diagram. So, that is in such a way that we could actually graph it, somehow graph, or present it in a manner that we could actually see the shortest possible time. Okay. The number of trips to city A to all other cities. Yeah, so, uh, in relation to the trips, okay? So, we have given it here. Okay, from our previous... Okay, that's one. No? A to D. Okay. And then, we will just sum up here. Okay? The number of trips. Because, given the possible time. Tama? So, we given with the possible time. Compared to here. And then, 
last in the problem is the travel demand on each rail line connecting the city. So, travel demand means the number of trips okay, connecting the city. So, uh, basically, in traffic assignment, what we're, we're asked is the shortest possible time transferring greater number of trips or people. No? Because, uh, since we've discussed the first two, the trip generation, trip distribution, we, we found out that we could actually uh, distribute the number of trips in trip distribution. We could generate the trips in trip generation uh, considering the classification or factors. Okay? So we could actually see it. And then from modal split, using logit model, we could actually assume, or let's say, for have the foresight of what will be the number of trips per mode. Okay? So in traffic assignment, so it will be on the shortest possible one. Okay? So even if you, in our traffic, uh, sorry, in our modal split, then we have this bus lane, but if that bus lane will not give us the possible shortest span, then maybe, just so maybe, those who are riding in drive alone or shared ride will not use the bus lane anymore. Right? So from our previous problems or uh, conditions. Okay? So that's the end of our discussion for classic four step model. Okay? Four step or forecasting model. Okay? So hopefully uh, you have learned something and uh if for the continue for the notes, no, I will just send it on your uh on our group, okay, so that you could have these notes in your own as a card. So thank you and hopefully you've learned something from this discussion.